um, at Hinkle Salon in Hyde Park. And that's where we are this evening. I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about shampooing your hair and conditioning your hair. And overall, what you need to do just kind of as um, the basic foundation of caring for your hair. If you joined the first presentation and we talked a little bit about how to detangle, we talked about tools and we talked about products. Um, I think that there is a replay available. So if you missed that one, at some point you can go back and watch that one. Mm -hmm. Also, as she mentioned, I do have social media. So if you are on Instagram or Facebook, you can follow me there at Rachel O Beauty. I would definitely love to stay in touch with you and answer any questions you have, as well as if you're looking for a stylist, definitely open to checking availability. And I'm here to serve and support you with your questions about your natural hair journey. So as she mentioned, as I mentioned, we're at the shampoo bowl. And probably one of the questions that I get most often is how often should you shampoo your hair? I typically recommend that you shampoo your hair every seven to 10 days. And that is because um, healthy hair, it starts at the scalp. So if you're properly cleansing your hair, then that's good for your scalp. It's good for your hair follicles. And it just overall helps to create a, a, a really nice, healthy and um, an environment where your hair can grow. So every seven to 10 days. And I hope that you guys can um, see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna first start off with a little bit of warm water. You wanna make sure that when you're shampooing your hair, you do use warm water not hot warm water is what opens up the cuticle and cold water is what closes the cuticle and so that i don't know if you've ever noticed but that's why typically when you get your hair done your stylist will first shampoo you with warm water opening up that cuticle and then they'll do a cool rinse when they're done with these conditions Okay. So we're going to shampoo her first. And I am going to actually flat iron her here. Unfortunately, because we don't have enough time tonight, you guys won't be able to see the after. But I will post the photo to um, Instagram so you guys can check the after out there. Okay. Um, so Rachel, we have our first question. Sorry. Sure. Um, there is a person that wants to know. Um, how to watch their box braids. Um, they apparently keep um, the braids in their package to avoid break it, breakage. So they wanted to know, you know, how long do you think that they should wash them or when do you think they should wash them? Um, because you haven't braided and you obviously are concerned about the longevity of the style, you want the braids to continue to look well, then I would say in that case, you can shampoo your hair maybe every two weeks. And you can actually use what I'm going to use something like this, which is a shampoo that has a little bit of a nozzle on it. Um, and this nozzle is great for something like box braids because of the, the applicator allows you to kind of just go in and really target the scalp areas. So I would say every, I would say every, uh, every 10 days you can shampoo. Also, if you don't have something like this, you can also, you could use something like um, a sea breeze and put it in a spray bottle or put it um, on a little Q-tip and just kind of go over your scalp with it. And the first shampoo that I always do is I do a clarifying shampoo. That's what this is. A clarifying shampoo is gonna make sure that we get all of the product off of her hair. Um, a lot of times women with natural hair, they do tend to have a lot of product, whether it's shea butter, oil, or something that, some type of product to define your curls. So it could be a gel. 
all of those tend to be very um, heavy products um, that need you need to make sure you get out of the hair. So that is why I start off with a clarifying shampoo conditioner first. So I'm just going to add a little bit more water, which is going to activate the shampoo. And then once I have the hair um, pretty saturated with the product, I like to go in with a shampoo brush and really focus on the scalp. Because again, we know that healthy hair starts at the scalp. So I want to make sure that the scalp is really nice and clean. Also, massaging the scalp helps to um, get the blood stimulating to this area. But, you know, also you'll have things like dandruff on your scalp, or if you're using like an edge control, you might want to go in and just really break those things up. So I find that the best way to do that and to cleanse it here at the same time is to use a shampoo brush. Now I'm using this one. This one is like a dollar or two. You can find it at any local beauty supply store, or you could use something like this. Now this is the Tangle Teaser. This is this one is definitely found in like your local Target or Walmart, and this is made to detangle the hair at the ball while you're shampooing. But also, again, using it with your shampoo is going to help to further cleanse your hair. So I'm just using the Tangle tangled teaser to move my shampoo around. Now I'm going to rinse this. And now that we've done our clarifying shampoo, I'm going to go behind that with the moisturizing shampoo. And as we know, if you have natural hair, a lot of times your hair will tend to be on the drier side. So because of that, it's really important that once we've clarified, we go back in with something that is going to moisturize. So I'm just gonna rinse this, then I'll do the moisturizing shampoo. And while I'm doing this, if there's any questions, this is a great time to ask those questions while I'm rinsing her. Okay, um, there's one more question. Um, this particular patron is interested in any info uh, on transitioning hair. They don't want to cut it um, and it's long. So they just wanna kinda know what is the I guess the best way to uh, keep it healthy. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Yes, yeah, sure. um, there, there's a patron that is interested in any info of transitioning hair. Um, they have long hair and they don't wanna cut it. So um, since you're in this particular uh, session washing uh, your sister's hair, what do you suggest? Cause I was going to um, also point them to the first session cause you covered a lot in there. Yeah, um, so for transitioning hair, if you choose to keep the both the um, relaxed hair and the naturally curly hair, um, it can be very challenging because you have those two textures and they're literally are the complete opposite, especially depending on how your coarse hair starts to come in. So probably what I would recommend a lot of times for my clients, we've done bride sets. Those work really well because you can, if done correctly, you can camouflage both of the textures on a ride. And then you kind of get the, the best of both worlds. You can style it where you have like a lot of volume and you get that natural look that you're moving towards and transitioning. Um, or if you blow it out with a little bit more heat, you can still have somewhat of a sleek look that you would get from having the relaxer in your hair. So I would say rod sets are really good. Um, you can also do something like braids, braiding your hair while you're growing it out. Um, and I would say those would be probably with the first, those would be my two best recommendations that come to mind. Riding it or doing um, some braids or um, looking at other types of protective styles like um, clip-ins or extensions. Um, there certainly are a lot of options to help you until your hair is all one texture. Okay. Um, 
there is a add on to this particular question. Um, a patron wants to know what kind of products do you think are um, like the shampoo uh, that you're using? Uh, just just different products that would help with that, that the different um, textures that you were talking about. Would help with transitioning hair or just natural hair, period? Uh, transitioning, uh, tr transitioning hair, that's specifically. So you don't really need special products for your hair that is transitioning. Um, you just want to make sure that you keep it clean and that um, depending on what kind of styles you're wearing, you're making sure that you're keeping your hair nice and hydrated. And um, you really don't need like a special product just for transitioning hair. And honestly, I do know that a lot of people, especially with being in a pandemic, a lot of people are caring for their hair at home. I completely get that. Um, it just feels safer in this day and age with what's going on. But I would say that this is actually one of the times where I would say you probably would get your best help just by coming in for a consultation so that your hair can be seen, whether it's with me or whoever you choose in your area, just so that your hair can be seen and they can kind of really zero in on exactly what you're going to need for your hair type and for your lifestyle and for the look that you're working for. And so the best way that that can be done is live and in person with a consultation. So I know I'm kind of giving you a long answer, but again, just to recap, you don't really need special products while you're transitioning. Now, if you're completely natural, I have lots of product recommendations for you. And we did go over that in the first um, Zoom. So if you missed that one, if you missed that one, then um, try to go back and watch it. Yep, because um, it's, it's actually on our YouTube page right now. So okay. um, so you can reach that through our website. Um, you can scroll down to the bottom and the YouTube icon is there. So um, it's one of the, I think it's the first video that you'll see on our screen. So um, the video is there, so you can definitely go back to review. Okay. So this is the second shampoo. This is the moisturizing shampoo. And again, just to recap, because she came in with product and I wanted to make sure I got all that gel out, we did a um, we did a clarifying shampoo first. And now we're doing a moisturizing shampoo, which is gonna infuse some of the moisture back into her hair. And then my tools of choice this evening are I'm using a shampoo brush for deeper cleansing and to help with um, to help give a little bit of scalp massage. And then I also used a tangle, uh, tangle, te tangle teaser. So I'm just gonna rinse this and I'm gonna prepare her hair next for conditioning and the steam treatment. And I think once I'm done with those, then I'll have time to take more questions for you guys. If there are any questions now, I guess this would be a good time because I'm just rinsing. I'm just making sure I get all the shampoo out of her hair. Yep, there's uh, one more question, and there's a patron asking about apple cider vinegar. Um, is that a good scalp cleanser? Can you repeat that? Yes, um, apple cider vinegar. Is that a good skin cleanser? A uh, scalp cleanser? Sorry. Um, it's okay to use occasionally. I would say if you're looking to um, cleanse your hair like on a regular day, you probably want to just go with a just a regular shampoo. Um, but it is okay to use every once in a while. All right, ladies um, or gentlemen, please do chime in with questions. Uh, please type them in the chat box and. Um, uh, like Miss Odom says, she'll do uh, a question and answer at the very end. So uh, don't hesitate to uh, put your answers, uh, sorry, your uh, questions in there. One thing you guys want to do when you have curly hair is if you notice how I'm continuing to lift up the hair and I'm splitting it apart, I'm doing that because with curly hair, you know, it, it curls, it tangles. So even your, like your product, your shampoos, your conditioners, your styling products, 
deck sometimes it can be like lodged up underneath a section and so that's why i'm always when i'm shampooing i'm always very conscious of making sure that i'm looking out the scalp and making sure that i'm circulating the water around the entire head because you want to make sure you get all of that out of the hair and so now that i know that i have the shampoo out we're going to condition her hair And I always like to start off working it on the ends. Shampoo is primarily for the scalp and conditioner is for the hair. Now that's not to say that you can't use them, you know, both areas because you can, you saw that I did. But again, when you're using that shampoo, you primarily want to concentrate it on your scalp because that's what it's made for, scalping your hair, and your conditioner, you really want to concentrate that not so much on the scalp, but more so on your hair. And the same thing, I'm just going through section by section and making sure that every um, part is saturated with the conditioner. And this is a great time. This is a really great time to um, detangle the hair while the conditioner is in there. So can you use um, a detangling comb like you have right there? Is that the best one to use? Yeah, I like to use a wide tooth comb. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going through and I'm just combing the conditioner through. Okay. And then once I'm done with each section, I'm actually going to put her hair into some Bantu knots and then she will go under the steamer with the conditioner on. And the steam is going to open up the cuticle so that the conditioner really gets down into the hair follicle because what happens is if you, if you are conditioning your hair without a heat source, the conditioner makes your hair feel really good, right? It it um it makes your hair easy to comb, but if you don't if you're not using it with a heat source, um, it's not really getting down into the hair follicle. So that's why we do the steam treatments here. So that is opposed to the conditioner just kind of sitting on the top, it really gets down in there. So that's what we're gonna do after I'm done combing this through. She'll go under the steamer so that the cortex can really be uh, penetrated with the product that we're using. And so I'm just combing through her hair, combing through these tangles. This is this would be a great time to take some questions as well. Okay, uh, another patron wanted to know, are regular towels not recommended for natural hair? And um, if so, what material um, do you wrap hair with when done washing? I know um, I've seen people do it with t-shirts or anything like that. What do you suggest? Microfiber towels are the best. That's what we use here at the salon. Um, the other towels, I mean, we've all used the other towels. It's not like they're gonna like really, really harm your hair. I mean, they're not the best. The material is not the best, but you know, if that's what you have and that's what you have. Um, but here I recommend the microfiber towels. You can buy those, you can find those pretty much anywhere. Or as you mentioned, you could do like a t-shirt, a cotton, you could do a cotton t-shirt and that'll be fine as well. Okay. All right, then the next question is a uh, steamer better than a hair dryer? Um, I do prefer the steamer because the steamer also adds, in addition to helping the products to penetrate, it also adds water into the hair. And um, as you know, H2O water is how your hair is moisturized. So yes, I do, my personal preference is a steamer versus a dryer. And that's not, that's not to say that you won't get any benefits from the dryer because it's a heat source. So it is gonna help the product to, to um, penetrate. Um, but again, with the steamer, the additional benefit that you have is that the, the steamer, the water that's 
coming from the steamer is um, being uh, reinforced back into the air with each treatment. Um, uh, so the very last question that I do see right now is uh, that if, what is an alternative at home if you don't have a steamer? Um, if you don't have a steamer, then you can use a dryer. Um, again, there are going to be some benefits there. I actually do that myself sometimes because I, I have a handheld steamer at home, but I don't have the steamer that we have here. I do know that there also are like some, I'm not sure what the name of it, but there's these caps that they have out on the market that you can stick into your microwave and you can put the conditioner on your hair and then you put the, the heated cap on your hair. Um, again, I, I, a company sent me one to review like a while ago. So I, unfortunately, because of that, I cannot remember the name of it, but I'm thinking maybe if you Google like heated hair cap, um, for natural hair, maybe it'll pop up. I'm sorry, I don't know what the name of it is. Oh, I'm sorry. And I did say the handheld steamer. It's called the Q-Redo. And do you know how to uh, spell that at all? Q- Okay. Dash R-E-D-E-W. R-E- Oh, sorry. Okay, Q- Dash R-E- D E W. V as in Victor. Okay. Sorry. D as in dog. Okay. D as in dog. Sorry. <laughs> to redo. Okay. And you can see that her hair has some tangles. So um, I'm just going through it. I usually like to use a combination of my fingers. Fingers will be the most gentle way to work the tangles out between my fingers and a comb. That's how you can get some of these tangles out. And again, when you have the conditioner on, that's a great time to do your, um, to do your detangling. Okay, I put that, uh, the steamer name into the chat. So, okay. Um, Okay, uh, please ask your questions because uh, we're nearing the time that we um, are need to stop. So um, as soon as uh, Ms. Odom gets done detangling, I don't want her to stop in the, in the middle. Um, but- uh, Well, you know what, I'm actually gonna put her, I'm actually gonna put her in, this, in the steamer now so okay. you guys can see me do that. Okay, all right, so why don't we, I'll, then I'll let the questions until you, you, you show putting the person in this, your sister in the steamer. What time, what time are we at? Um, we are at 6.25. Okay, okay. So um, I know we're gonna be ending soon. So for demonstrational purposes, I'm just gonna show you guys um, how I prepare her here for the steamer. So I'm just gonna take this little section and make sure I keep it nice and stretched. It's already been detangled. And then I'm just gonna put it in a bantu knot. And I'm, I usually go over and do that in about four sections. And then this is the steamer. There's water here in the back. And once I'm completely done sectioning her hair, she'll go under the steamer and that will help um, that will help with conditioning her hair and keeping it hydrated. Okay. Um, then, uh, and that's just a time just to, so we know what's going on. Um, I think the last question that we have right now is, uh, how long should a person uh, steam with the conditioner? Can you overdo it? You don't need to do it for more than like 20 minutes. Um, if you're doing it more than that, I mean, I've done overnight conditioning treatments. It's been more so because I've been a little on the lazy side, <laughs> but extra conditioning, it doesn't help. It doesn't hurt, it doesn't hurt the hair at all. Um, natural hair does tend to be drier and there may be sometimes like where you're coming out of braids or you just perhaps maybe didn't just didn't take the best care of your hair and your hair just could use the extra time. Also, sometimes it's just about convenience. 
you know, you put that conditioner on when you're in the shower, you sleep overnight, and then you rinse it out in the morning. Um, but on average, I would say 20 minutes is fine. Okay. Um, that looks like it's the last question. So um, if anyone has any more questions, please feel free to ask, uh, ask them. Um, Ms. Odom is more than willing to, ask, to answer them right now. So, um, so please do put those in the chat box. Um, so for me, when you're doing the Bantu knots and you're twisting them, how do you make them stay into the knot itself? Because I've seen it with rubber bands, but you know, you look like you're kind of flipping that, like you're twisting them into each other, kind of. Yeah, these are actually horrible bands who knots because they're, <laughs> they're just made for conditioning purposes. Um, if I was doing this as a style, because we know a lot of people do wear the bands who knots as a style, um, I will use either an open bobby pin. And then also it's more so about the technique, how tight this is, and that makes the hair nice and secure. Okay. But when you're washing it like that, you can just kind of put the hair underneath one and it, like underneath where you're doing it. You can. And also again, because each section has been saturated with product, that is what kind of helps it to kind of behave a little bit more. Um, okay, here is a question. Uh, is it better to do knots or twists uh, than to leave the hair loose? Or does the style you plan to do impact your choice? It doesn't really matter because again, I'm more so just doing the Bantu knots or if you're doing twists, I'm really more so just doing this because I wanna keep the hair nice and stretched but more importantly, I want to keep the hair detangled. And so that can be detangling the hair that can be achieved with twist or with bantu knots. This is typically my steaming process, but there definitely are some times where, you know, I'll have a client and due to time or just their particular hair texture, like if it's a shorter hair texture, or if it's hair that's very um, dense, I might just put the product on and stick them under um, without the band too much. It doesn't happen often, but it's, again, it's not harmful to the hair. The more important thing is that the client has the conditioner on and that the hair has been detangled. So either with twist or with band two knots, your, the hair is going to be detangled and thoroughly saturated with a conditioner. That's the most important thing. Okay. So um, I, I don't see any more questions, but I'm gonna ask some. Um, so any of the product that you use tonight, like the clarifying um, uh, shampoo, and then you use the moisturizing shampoo, um, going back to the first uh, particular uh, program that you did for us, you said to use one product line if you can. Um, what product? What product line are you? Do you suggest for this particular uh, washing and in, in the clarifying shampoo? So at the salon, we try to use as much professional products as possible, and so we do have our own line of products. We have the beautiful line, and then we also have Masani. Their, their line that's for professionals. The Therma Smooth is one that I really like to use on natural hair because it really does um, smooth the hair throughout the entire shampoo and conditioning uh, process. And then they also have a gentle clarifying shampoo, which I do recommend using clarifying before you moisturize because I will get all that product off of there. Um, and then Design Essentials which is a black owned um, hair care brand and they have really good quality ingredients. So typically it's gonna be one of those three. It's gonna be Hutiful, which is the brand that we use here at the salon, Mazzani, or it's gonna be Design Essentials. Okay. Um, but uh, the, the best thing is, um, I'm assuming, is to try to use like one line of product. Um, <laughs> If at all possible, if at all okay. possible. Now, I'm not, I'm not going to say that I don't ever use, um, 
products from different lines because I, I certainly do. But as it comes to shampooing, conditioning, and treating, I do try to stay with all the same line. Um, but there are times where I will mix it up a little bit. It kind of, it really depends on what I'm doing. As much as possible, yes, all the products are made, they're, um, they're made to, they're formulated to work together. And so if you use something from another line, sometimes the ingredients can counteract each other, which is why I gave that recommendation. But again, it's on a case by case basis and it kind of depends on what you're doing. Does that, did that answer your question? Um, it looks like it, yeah. Um, okay. So right now it is 6.32. So I just okay. wanted to remind everyone that um, the last session that we had with Ms. Odom is going to be this coming Wednesday at 6 p.m. Um, so I have, um, I'm gonna put uh, her information into the chat box again. Um, I did it at the very beginning, but I'm gonna do it again just so you guys can get in touch with her. Um, and also with that being said, if you guys um, have any questions, then please do email the library and I will get that over to Ms. Odom um, as soon as possible. Um, we are closed Monday, so <laughs> um, I will not be able to do that on Monday, but on Tuesday, I will see those um, particular emails or questions um, and I will get them over to Ms. Odom if you um, have missed something. So um, I'm going to get ready to put that in the chat box for you guys. Uh, let's see. Okay, uh, so that information is now in the chat box. So, um, Miss Odom, did you want to say anything else to uh, your uh, your class? No, but uh, happy Valentine's Day, everyone, and um, look forward to seeing you guys on the next Zoom. Thank everyone for joining, and you guys have a safe. Um, evening. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for coming out. Um, like I said, the next one, uh, the next session will be this coming Wednesday at 6 p.m. Um, the link is on our um, our calendar of events on our website. Uh, the first session is on our YouTube page, and that can be found if you scroll down to the bottom of our website um, with the uh, the YouTube link. Um, this again will be uh, on YouTube as well, so you can reference back to this particular uh, session. Um, that should be up sometime next week. Um, so I just wanted to give you guys a happy Valentine's Day as well, and thank you again, Miss Odom, and thank you. What is your sister's name again? Camille. Camille, thank you, Camille, for being for being her uh, her model tonight. You were really great. All right, everyone, thank you. Good night. Bye, take care.